Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I hope that you're well. My apologies. Uh, this computer has taken on a life of its own this morning and has taken me ages to get it to go. So I hope you can hear me. Uh, my picture here is frozen. So um, if someone could message in to let me know whether you can see and hear me, that will be really appreciated. Anyway, welcome to people who have joined, to Linda, welcome to Pat, Stephanie and Kay, to Elaine, Mary, Angie and Jeff, oh, from South Shields. Well, that's a, that's a turn up for the books. Uh, and to Annie. Um, so let me tell you what we're doing today. It's uh, Tuesday, the 4th of May. Uh, and uh, we're going to be using Psalm 19. Uh, and then our Old Testament reading is Deuteronomy chapter 17, the second half, and uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, the second half. Thanks for the messages to confirm you can see and hear. So let's turn to uh, morning prayer for Easter season. Welcome to Vicky. And we're continuing on page 263 in the daily prayer book. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So would you like to turn to our psalm for the day, which is Psalm 19, here in the daily prayer book. Uh, it's on page 673. And uh, welcome to lots of others who've joined, to Anna Claire, Eric, and to Jess. All right, and to John. Page 673. This is a beautiful psalm praising God's glory in creation. And I hope lots of you were able to see uh, that uh, vlog from Steve at the weekend, which was uh, a masterful uh, account of uh, why he, his faith in God stems from the very beginning of the Bible. In the beginning, God created and seeing God's beauty, God's order uh, in creation around us. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its source to another is song to another, and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. Yet their song has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure, is sure, and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, 
and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? Oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. Let's pray. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, rise in our hearts this day. Enfold us in the brightness of your love and bear us at the last to heaven's horizon for your love's sake. Amen. So we turn to our Old Testament reading. We're continuing in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 17, verses 8 to the end. Uh, this is, so this is Moses continuing his speech uh, addressed to the Israelites about to enter the land and explain to them how uh, God's law is to be at the heart of the Jewish nation. Interestingly, you'll, we'll hear in this, um, Moses talking to the people about when they have a king, how they go about choosing that king. And of course, it was God's plan for them not to have a king, not to need a king. God was their king and God and the judges would be over them, not kings. Um, but this recognizes that that wouldn't be good enough for the people. So this is looking forward to a time when, contrary to God's will, uh, the people would ask for and God would give them a king. Deuteronomy 17, 8 to the end, beginning on verse 180. If a judicial decision is too difficult for you to make between one kind of bloodshed and another, one kind of legal right and another, or one kind of assault and another, any such matters of dispute in your towns, then you shall immediately Go up to the place that the Lord your God will choose, where you should consult with the Levitical priests and the judge who is in office in those days. They shall announce to you the decision in the case. Carry out exactly the decision that they announce to you from the place that the Lord will choose, diligently observing everything they instruct you. You must carry out fully the law that they interpret for you or the ruling that they announce to you. Do not turn aside to the decision that they announce to you, either to the right or to the left. As for anyone who presumes to disobey the priest appointed to minister there to the Lord your God or the judge, that person shall die. So you shall purge the evil from Israel, or the people will hear and be afraid and will not act presumptuously again. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and have taken possession of it and settled in it. And you say, I will set a king over me like all the nations that are around me. You may indeed set over you a king whom the Lord your God will choose. <clears throat> One of your own community you may set as king over you. You are not permitted to put a foreigner over you who is not of your own community. Even so, he must not acquire many horses for himself or return the people to Egypt in order to acquire more horses. Since the Lord has said to you, you must never return that way again. And he must not acquire many wives for himself or else his heart will turn away. Also silver and gold he must not acquire in great quantity for himself. When he has taken the throne of his kingdom, he shall have a copy of this law written for him in the presence of the Levitical priests. It shall remain with him and he shall read it, read in it all the days of his life so that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, diligently observing all the words of this law and these statutes, neither exalting himself above other members of the community, nor turning aside from the commandment, either to the right or to the left, so that he and his descendants may reign long over his kingdom in Israel. So let's turn to our 
New Testament reading, which is 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 13 to the end. So this is a letter from Peter to churches in Asia Minor, which is uh, modern day Turkey, written between about AD 60 to AD 64. Paul write, Peter writing probably from Rome a few years before he was executed. And he's writing to Christians facing persecution. And I was reading this morning that although they're living through time of persecution in the Roman Empire, probably what he's writing about is that they are facing persecution, ridicule um, by the people who they're living around as opposed to by the Roman Empire. And he's urging them to remain faithful to Christ in the midst of that type of persecution. Page 230. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. Uh, welcome to David who's joined us. Let's return to morning prayer and to the responsory on page 266. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. <clears throat> death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? And we say the Benedictus together. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. 
and the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Let's turn to our intercessions for the day. Uh, we need to continue to pray for the situation in India, which is uh, sort of disappeared again off the top of the headlines, isn't it? But it's as bad as ever, uh, as we hear, and still uh, quite a while off the peak. So let's pray for um, the relief of suffering for all those who are on the front line uh, in India and for a generous response for the, for the world community. And let's pray for the situation in, in Mexico City this morning, that terrible uh, train crash with a, um, an, um, a sort of overpass has collapsed. Uh, let's pray for the rescue operation, which is ongoing. And for individuals who we're praying for, uh, let's pray for, uh, we need to pray for uh, Joan, Linda, Linda Ryan's mum, who is uh, extremely ill. And we need to pray for her and the family uh, as they cope with all of that and, and care for her. We continue to pray for Jen and Jonty as uh, as they face a, a devastating diagnosis for her, for M and R as he uh, waits to start cancer treatment. Uh, we need to pray for, uh, can we pray for the Reverend Robert Chapman, who is a, a vicar um, in um, in Hamwell uh, and is, uh, is facing treatment for a virulent form of cancer. We pray for him. And I'll leave space if there's other people and situations that you would like to pray for at the beginning of this week. So the uh, form of prayer in sessions I'm going to be using today, uh, ones we've used before, where the response is, uh, Lord of all, Lord for all, hear our prayer. Lord of all, Lord for all, hear our prayer. Holy and loving God, we pray for your world, for leaders who are making difficult decisions as every day brings new changes and challenges. Father, we pray especially for the situation in India. We pray for all those with responsibility for bringing this under control and providing the resources needed. And we pray that you help them to make wise decisions for the care of the people they're responsible for. We pray for those on the front line of caring for others. You would give them the strength they need today. We pray that you would save life. You would comfort the dying and bereaved. And we pray for generosity from around the world. And Father, we pray too this morning for the situation in Mexico City, that train crash. And Lord, we pray for the rescue efforts. We pray for those who have been injured, that you would save their lives. And Lord, you would comfort those who've been bereaved. Lord of all, Lord for all, hear our prayer. We pray for our own nation. The decisions might be made with wisdom and care for the benefit of all. Lord of all, Lord for all, hear our prayer. We pray for our own community. We pray for all those we live among. That your peace might reign and your perfect love might settle our fears. Lord of all, Lord for all, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for those who are on the front line of caring for others in this country and around the world. For doctors and nurses, for carers, for shop workers, for those who collect the rubbish, for postal workers, 
or those in schools and colleges. Strengthen them today by your spirit, Lord. And give them the resources they need to serve those in their care. Lord of all, Lord for all, hear our prayer. We pray for our loved ones, for those we know who may be ill, for those who are struggling, for those who are confused and conflicted. Especially we pray for those we are particularly concerned for at this time. We pray for Joan. We pray for Jen and John T. We pray for M and R. We pray for Father Robert Chapman. We pray for the family of that policewoman murdered in Kent and for all those seeking to find her killer. In the quiet, let's bring to God any others we know who we're concerned for this time. Lord of all, Lord for all, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. You know what's on our hearts and our minds, and so we offer those things to you at the start of this day. In the quiet, bring to God what is on your heart. Seek his presence. Lord of all, Lord for all, hear our prayer. The collect prayer for Easter season. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten son to the death of the cross. And by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Well, again, thank you so much, everyone, for being part of this this one. I think we've got about 20 people taking part at the moment, which is uh, wonderful. Uh, and so I hope that you will have that sense of God walking alongside you, the spirit of Jesus being within you, whatever lies ahead for you today. Uh, Vicky's going to be leading evening prayer today. Uh, so please do join her. That'll be recorded and on YouTube at five. And I'll be back, hopefully, uh, on time tomorrow if this computer decides to play ball. So hopefully I'll see you at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. So may God bless you and go with you through today. See you tomorrow. <laughs>